As you have probably heard, Chia has decided to discontinue the CAT1 standard and replace it with an upgraded CAT2 standard. If you are the issuer of a CAT1 token, what you're going to need to do is create a complete snapshot of your token at the end of life block height for CAT1, and that includes every single coin that is in the coin set, uh, including its puzzle hash, which is basically its address, and its amount or value. So you create a snapshot of all of those coins, and then you're going to issue or airdrop a brand new CAT2 version of that coin in the same puzzle hash and the same amount. So all of your users will get an upgrade. Uh, this is not quite as difficult as it sounds at first, and I'm going to walk you through this process here in two videos. So this video, the first part, will be creating the snapshot, and then the second video will be for doing the airdrop. So let's go ahead and get started with this process of creating the snapshot. The one thing that you need as a prerequisite here is a fully synced Chia 1.5 or greater node. And you'll see here, I have a fully synced node running. I'm not, however, running mainnet for this video. I'm running a custom testnet. And the reason I'm doing that is because as I'm recording this, uh, Chia 1.5 does not yet exist, but this will mimic 1.5. So you need to have 1.5 and the, the way you can uh, verify that is by running Chia version. And you should see, well, for me, it's going to be 1.4.1.dev33. You'll see 1.5 or greater. And once you have that, you can download the repository that you need in order to create the snapshot. I have put that in the command here. This is the clone command. And you don't need to type out all of these commands that I'll show you in this tutorial. Uh, I have a written copy of this and it'll go through actually much more detail than I'll go through in the video, but the video will give you the gist of what you need. So this repository that we've created is called cat addresses. As you can see, it only took a couple seconds to clone, it's pretty small. And now there is a little bit of environment setup that you need to do before you actually install it. You need to set up four variables, and the easiest way to do that is to create a .env file, and that'll go into the repository. Um, I have already created this file here, and I'm going to move it into that repository that I just cloned. But you can create a new one and open it in your favorite text editor. You'll notice I'm using Windows here for this video. It's fine if you want to use Linux or Mac OS. Most of the commands that I'll show you are going to be pretty much the same. I'll show you any differences between the operating systems. So we'll open this. In this case, I'll open it in Notepad. And you'll need to fill in these four values. So the first one is full node host name. And that's where this uh, tool is going to be run from. Almost always localhost is fine, unless you have some special custom config. The next one is DB Sourcester. That's where your Chia mainnet database is stored. That's usually going to be in your home folder and then slash dot Chia slash mainnet slash DB. You do need to put out the full uh, path to that folder. Make sure you get the slashes facing the right direction. And otherwise, you should be good to go. And then the final two variables that you need are start height and target height. Start height is where to start creating that snapshot from. This is a Chia block, and this tool will scan your database for each block, starting with this one, and look for every single Cat1 token that exists. Um, I'm going to use this particular block here because it is starting just before cat1 was started. Uh, you, there's really no need to start any earlier than this because cat1 didn't exist before this. And the target height should always be 23.11.760, and that's because it's the last valid block for cat1. You don't want to go any higher than this, or you'll, you'll get a snapshot after cat1 already was not valid, 
you don't want to go lower than this either. You want exactly this number here. I have all of these values in the written instructions, so you can just copy and paste them. Okay, so once I have this .env uh, filled out properly, I can close it uh, back to my PowerShell here, and I'm going to run the install command. So that's python setup.py and install. Oh, sorry, I have to cd into the repository that I cloned, and then I'm going to run that command. Uh, this might take 30 seconds to a minute on most computers. It's very fast for me simply because I've already installed it on my laptop here. And if, uh, if you see a larger output, it's not a problem at all. Don't worry about it. That is going to have to pull down a bunch of stuff to install. So once that's done, uh, then I can go ahead and there's a couple of more things that I should make sure that are on my installed on my computer. The first one's going to be python.env. So pip install python.env. Okay, I have requirements already satisfied. That's because I've already installed it. There's really no harm in install, trying to install it again, but you definitely need this one to run this tool. And then the final one is pip install back off. Okay, requirement already satisfied for me. So now I'm ready to set up my database. And to do that, I will run python setup uh, database.py. Okay, and that just takes a second or so to run. And the next, is, the next command here is the big one. And so that's going to be python start.py. Uh, I'm not going to run this command here simply because I've already run it. And this will be what scans your entire database and pulls together a, a complete list of every single coin that exists from Cat1, all of the Cat1 coins on Chia, not just yours. Uh, once you've already run it for a block, a particular block, you can't run rerun that same block because it's already done. So I'll get an error if I run it. But this command will uh, take a long time. It took me about 40 hours to run on my laptop. If you have a server or a faster machine, it'll be faster, but still it's going to take a while. And I will point out that Chia, the, the company, Chia Network Inc., is going to put out a, a CSV file, a snapshot, essentially, for every single Cat1 token. And you can download these and use them to compare what Chia came up with for the, the snapshot at the end of life block height with the one that you came up with. Now, they should always be identical because they are using the same blockchain. But you can download that one and use it for your reference. You are recommended, however, to create your own snapshot for your own reissuance. And that's what this start command will do. So once that command is done, you're going to need to create your own CSV comma separated value file for your particular cat. And in order to do that, you need to know your tail hash. So that probably if you don't already know it, the easiest way to get it is to go here to tail database and search for it. And for this example, I'll use cat king Cole, which is a cat one cat that I created just for testing. And the tail hash of any cat is going to be written right above the title. So this is it here. I will copy it. And now I'm ready to uh, create that CSV snapshot file. And so the command to do that, remember you do need to run that python starts.py command. I will now run python export to export my file and the flag is output dir. Um, you can, I'm just going to put it in my local directory here and I will put a, uh, a prefix to this file so that I can view it uh, or sort it easier later. And you don't have to do this, but I'll put dot slash ckc underscore. And you'll get an idea of what that means in just a second. 
Uh, and then the other flag is tail hash. So dash dash tail hash. And that's the one that I just copied. So I'll paste that, run it. And so now it's creating this CSV file based on the, the database that took all of that time to set up with every single coin. You can run one command and get a snapshot for every single cat. And you can, there's a few other configuration things that you can do. I've put those in the written instructions. This should just take a few more seconds to complete, hopefully. And I'll wait for it here. Okay, it's all done. Um, now you'll see why I put this CKC underscore here. And that's because it prepended those letters to the, the file name. And so that is in the local directory that I was in, which is here. And let me just look at this. Now I am running Windows. And on Windows, when you run this command, it's going to put a blank line between each coin. What we have here is column A is puzzle hash, column B is amount, and then blank line. Blank lines are bad here. We don't want any of those. If you're running this on Mac or Linux, you shouldn't have any blank lines anyway. You should be good to go. However, I need to get rid of those because I'm on Windows. And probably the easiest way to do that is with a utility called DOS to Unix. Um, I put a link to it in the written instructions. Uh, it's on SourceForge, and I've already downloaded it on this computer, so I'm just going to run that now. I put that in my, my downloads folder, and it's DOS to Unix, and bin DOS to Unix. Uh, you need a dash O, and I need that CSV file, which was in dot slash uh, ckc blah 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 dot csv okay with that handy it's converting it to unix format now if i reopen this file there won't be any blank lines in it so that's good this is exactly what we want one more thing you can do just just to kind of give yourself a sanity check here is you probably know what the total issuance was in terms of mojos this should be a billion mojos because that's how many I used originally. These numbers should add up to that original number. So if I go here and I sum this entire column, let's do that now, uh, I get 1 billion. And that's the exact right number. So that's good. You might have a much uh, larger CSV file th than this one. That's because you might have hundreds or thousands even of tokens, and that's fine. Um, oh, I'm not going to save this. You don't want this last thing here. This was just the sanity check. So I will close this out. Don't save. Uh, if I open it again, it should be gone. And once you have this CSV file with a snapshot of your entire Cat1 issuance, no blank lines in it, now you are ready to move on to the next step. And that is airdropping your issuance uh, as a Cat2. So I will cover that one in the next video.